brain, you're in the nerds domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi everybody, and oh, that's okay. Let's Sorry, let's go ahead and get started. I like I said, you didn't say we're arting. We're arting. We're arting. We're arting. Just for Scott, we're Are arting. I am. Okay. I know how to hit that button. This All is right. Audacity. I'm set. <laughs> okay, it is working. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Nerds Made Podcast, live from Indie PopCon. Mm. I'm Matt. I'm, John. I'm Shirley. Oh. <laughs> I do All this every notes. single time. Notes. Every single time. <laughs> Go ahead, Jesse. I'm Justin. This is your turn. I'm Shirley. And I'm Candace. See how Candace is a professional here? <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> so, uh, Candace, we have Candace McClure with us from uh, Battlestar Galactica and Hemlock Grove. Um, Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Candace, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, well, uh, you know, there are people watching us. This is new for us. So. Oh. <laughs> Hi, people. <laughs> so yeah, say we say all. all. Oh, of course, there's the 501st. <laughs> so um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing lately um, as far as um, auditions. Like, like, just tell us about what's going on in Candace's life. Uh, what's going on in Candace's life? You know, most of the time, I lead a pretty ordinary life. I shouldn't say that. I, I lead an exceedingly glamorous life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Full of exciting things and grand adventures. There you go. Um, uh, I've been uh, big, big Hollywood stuff. Yes, Hollywood. If only you knew what I did in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> wait, don't take that the wrong well, there, way. That, Too late. There was that one time. <laughs> there was that one time. Um, I spend. Um, most of my time in Los Angeles, uh, some of it in Canada. As you know, that's where we shot Battlestar. That's uh-huh. where we shot uh, Hemlock Grove uh, in Toronto. Hemlock Grove in Toronto, Vancouver for BSG. Um, and then I do a fair bit of traveling outside of that. Um, I've been spending a lot of time in the Caribbean Ooh, lately. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, and trying to get... It, it, it's, it's a nice culture down there food culture and uh, the weather's great so I've been finding excuses as to as to why I can spend a few months out of the year down there <laughs> um, and try and get some projects going um, I audition wherever I am uh, technology is amazing uh, I get an email I put my iPhone on my Joby right <laughs> and on. My, my husband films me and I use <laughs> Hightail to send my audition and then I go off and do whatever else I was going to do for the day, which right is awesome on. for me. It means I can go anywhere in the world uh, and still do my job. Right on. Nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time, I guess my, my personal time, um, I'm an avid reader. Right on. Um, although I haven't read a novel in a very long time. <laughs> what, 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 what do you read exactly? Um, I... I like things where I'm sort of getting something out of it. Okay. Um, I read cookbooks. Ooh. Like books. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I love to be in the kitchen and I love to experiment with things. Um, I love to figure out how to make normal things out of not normal ingredients. Excellent. If yeah. that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but, but to make it accessible and, you know, not scary and not overly expensive to people. Um, let's see. So what what have I been see... reading lately? Oh. Um... Yeah, I've been reading, you know, The Green Life about smoothies, master of fermentation, because I like to know how to ferment things. I'm a bit, I'm a bit weird. I'm sorry. I'll apologize. No, no, no. <laughs> so are we, are we going to see a cookbook soon? Say again? Are we going to see a cookbook soon? Um, uh, maybe. I, I don't know how interested people would be in... In a cookbook, but maybe they would be. Yeah, they maybe. Would be. Yeah, yeah, no. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, go online and tell me if I should make a cookbook. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait to hear about it. What, what's your What's your fan page? Oh well, it's, where it's, can they go? Uh, Candice McClure on on Facebook. Uh-huh. Um, my website. Okay, this is my official apology <laughs> about the state of my website. Uh-oh. What? You're not a webmaster too? Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, my website has been such a mess for so long, and I've been trying so desperately to get it fixed. But I've got, there's like some weird juju around me just not being able to get my website together. I don't understand it. Like every single time I try, something oddball happens. Um, so, but I'm working on it. I've got a great, 
a great great company that's helping me with it, but the process is definitely slow. Yeah. But within the next three months, please, <laughs> my website will be up. All right. <laughs> so, and, and don't worry about being a little weird. You're on stage with four nerds in a yeah. Awesome. Yeah. convention yeah. full of nerds. We, we understand weird. We know weird. We're comfortable well, with it. N- you're in good company. Nerds rule, right? Absolutely. Is that, is that general? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's food geekery. Just think of it like that. I do, I do consider myself a food geek. Actually, if you look on my Twitter page, I think that's the first thing it says. It says, actress, food geek, shoe, shoe lover, 100% African woman. That's me. Right on. <laughs> so uh, I want you to know that you have helped contribute to many a fight between Shirley and I. Yes. Someone made made us watch Battlestar Galactica and then started watching it without me. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Like, That's okay, Shells. I got in trouble for that the other day. I started watching something without my husband. <laughs> what, what, what was that? It's like we can't ever do that. What were you watching? Well, funnily enough, Game of Thrones. Ooh. <laughs> See, you, I would be in the doghouse on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Did you get to meet Christian Narn yet? Uh, no, or uh, Esme Bianco. Is she there? Do I see her there right now? Oh you might. Gosh. Oh, my God. Chris, Christian is okay, so absolutely we're, huge we're and the nicest Candace guy. We're losing Candace to Esme. He looks like the nicest guy. He, he, like, I, I came up to him while we were still setting up, and I introduced myself and said hello. And Bye. he was not just not just happy to see me, but happy to interact with me. It was yeah. great. So I was really happy about that. You should definitely go over and say hi. Oh, I had my own fan moment when I, <laughs> I checked out the Indie Pop page, and I was like, ooh, who's going to be there? Like, who am I going out for drinks with later? Um, <laughs> right on. <laughs> um, awesome. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have a fan moment. Right on. <laughs> There's Game of Thrones people there. I'm going to buy an action figure or nine. Or nine. Probably. Right or all of them. Or all of them. No, no more dusting. I have to dust those action figures. <laughs> and until I guess I get a glass menagerie, that's it. <laughs> so you were on Battlestar Galactica for, what, four, four seasons? Four seasons, yep. How, how was that? Like, with that group, with that? With it that sucked. Home? It was the worst. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I could just imagine. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, it sounds so corny. It sounds so kind of soapy because it really was. It really was what you thought it was. We we all got there. We were all so excited to be working with Ron. I've been a fan of Ron since uh, since Star Trek. Star Trek was the very first. I grew up in South Africa, and we didn't really have a lot of uh, primetime shows. I guess you would call them. And Star Trek was one of the first shows that came on. And uh, as a little girl with a large imagination, this idea that you could go off into space and all these things were possible and race didn't really seem to matter and um, just themes that, I guess, resonated with, with me, um, even from a really young age. And then to, to work with him later on in my life, I could never have imagined that. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've followed Ron uh, throughout all these other incarnations as well, yeah. um, Carnival and... And I watch Helix now. <laughs> um, but we, we all showed up. We all loved our, our roles. We loved the story. We were excited to tell it. We thought it was really something new and something different. Um, and, you know, the, the, the flack that, that we were getting or that Ron was getting, I should say, about, ooh, well, who does he think he is? And he's remaking a classic and they're going to destroy it and it, it's going to suck and all these kinds of things. Kind of banded us together. Yeah, yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> holding, holding for sound. And, and we're rolling again. Um, <laughs> um, we all knew that we were, I don't know, we just got along. The, the minute we all met each other, we were like, oh, hey. It's like we knew each other forever. And Excellent. we all sort of just got along really well. Um, and you could feel it from the beginning. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you've got Eddie and Mary, who are like our mom and dad. And they've got to be like the <laughs> sweetest, nicest, funniest, kindest people you've ever met in your life. Right on. So that, that chemistry that they had on screen, they definitely, yeah. it showed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I think that was the greatest part for me when I was watching it. It, you know, so on some shows or some films, you definitely can see that they don't really have the chemistry, or 
in their eyes, you know, you can see that they're not that part, but through the whole series, and I think that's what drew me in, it's like every character in VSG was that character. They, they were that part. I agree. And I think that's why I'm oh, holding for sound. <laughs> These poor guys. They're just trying to do their job. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that was part of it, is that we could all trust each other to show up as what we were there to do um, because, the, you know, the casting was, was really spot on. And, yeah, you know, I thought Jamie was cute from the beginning, so it was great that I got to make out with him later on. Right on, yeah. <laughs> Although, listen, I loved Paul. I, I was really sad when he left. Yeah. Um, I actually thought I was going to be close on his heels. Oh, yeah. Uh, when he died, I was like, well, that's it. That was fun. I guess I'm, I'm the next to go, obviously. It's like, thanks, Paul. Way to ruin my storyline. So that was the prequel to Game of Thrones. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So how so, early do you know? How early do you know when something's going to come up in a script? Are you told in advance? No. Like, oh, no, not at all. No. So it's as much a surprise to you as it is everybody else. Yes. Um, you know, particularly when it got towards the end of the show. Uh, they were being very tight-lipped about things, and you know you don't you don't want any spoilers to get out there because you guys are crafty. <laughs> you know, let, let's just put that out there because I was supposed to be a Cylon. I'm convinced. I'm convinced I was supposed to be the fifth Cylon, but all of you got on the fan forums and they were like Anastasia. Her name is Anastasia. It means resurrection. She's totally the fifth Cylon. <laughs> and then they totally got together and they were like, "Well, we can't do that anymore. Who's up next?" <laughs> So thanks for that. <laughs> Although, Kate Vernon is pretty exceptional. So yeah. she, she knocked that one out of the park. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I think I found out, a, you know, a couple, uh, maybe four or five days beforehand what, what was going to happen. I mean, we didn't even get the scripts a lot of the time until, you oh, know, really? the day before. Wh- when it got towards the end. Yeah. yeah. Even, I mean, there were, there were even moments on within shooting. You know, like when Katie disappeared the first time? when we Yeah, got yeah. Changed? They told us she died. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> she, like, left the one day, and they were like, there was all these rumors flying around set, like, ooh, Katie left, and she got a different job, and she ain't going to be here. And, like, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Something's going on. And then I saw her and David Icke talking the one day, and I was like, hmm, something smells. <laughs> She's not dead. She's something. So in comparison to Battlestar Galactica, Hemlock Grove, what was, is there differences there? How, did that, how does that feel? I, I can't make any comparisons. I mean, Hemlock Grove or any other show I work on, Eddie kind of said it. You know, when Edward James almost stands up uh, at your very first table reading, and says, this is the best body of work. This is the best piece of television I have worked on or will ever work on in my career. He has a long career. So, you know, I told him that the other day. I was like, thanks, Eddie. (laughs) You know, it happened to you, you know, a little further on in your career. This is the beginning of my career, and you're telling me that it's all downhill from here? Is that basically what the deal is? Cool. All right. But at least I got, you know... I was warned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at least you got, you know, you did get to be on that show that was the best. I have no regrets. And, you know, Hemlock Grove was fantastic for me for different reasons. Um, she was a character that I didn't, that I don't often get to play. I usually play the sweet girl. I don't know where people get that impression of me from. <laughs> um, so this was fun that I got to play this sort of lone wolf kind of uh, badass girl. Right on. Um, and yes, that that was a lot of fun for me. Cool. So uh, go ahead. No. So you you no. uh, you just said no. <laughs> no like sorry. this is confusing. Um, go. Get used so, to go. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you you said you've been doing a bunch of auditions. Yes. Um, anything that you can talk about? Anything sci-fi, fantasy? Even if you can just hint at it, like. Are you going to be? I don't. A, I don't know if I am allowed. Are you going to be a Jedi? I guess I, I guess I could talk about it. It's just embarrassing if I don't get it. 
Uh, no, I recently auditioned for a role, a um, great role in a show called Ascension uh, that Sci-Fi is coming out with. I really love the premise of this show. Um, I guess it's sort of within the, the typical vein. Uh, so the idea is, is that during the Kennedy administration, during the Cold War, they manned a spaceship and sent it out to deep space to look for other inhabitable planets. Okay. They're looking for a star, a metal-heavy star called Proxima. Um, but because it's deep space and it it's, takes, a, takes a long time to get there, uh, there are now the third generation of people on this ship, oh. and they're only halfway there. Oh, okay. And people, there's, there's an uprising because half the people want to turn around and go back, and half the people want to want to keep going uh, and find the star. Um, and yeah, I, I auditioned for the the chief astronomer, uh, Emily Vanderhaus. Uh, but very cool premise. Yeah, sounds um, sounds very interesting. Yeah. So is it because of your childhood and the first draw toward you know the quote unquote stars that you tend to drift toward um, roles like these? Well, I didn't really have a choice in the matter. You know, I, I didn't actually think I was going to be an actress. It just kind of happened. I'm very grateful. <laughs> but this is not what I imagined for my life. Um, I love it. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, when, I mean, when you grow up in apartheid South Africa, you don't, pick, you don't go, hey, I'm going to be working with Ron Moore in America when I'm, you know, <laughs> when I'm 25. You don't, you don't think that. Um, and... I guess because I, I lived in Vancouver for a long time, that's where I got onto Battlestar. Vancouver is a very um, sci-fi heavy town in terms of filming. And sci-fi has been really good to me because the thing about sci-fi is, like I said, um, things are possible. Anything's possible. Uh, race doesn't matter. I, I, can, I can have an interracial love interest. I can be an astronomer or a weapons specialist. I can... And anything is within the realm of possibility. And that's not always true uh, for mainstream shows. Mm -hmm. um, or more, I guess, reality-based shows. <laughs> I don't know. Which is kind of confusing to me because that's kind of what the world is. But anyway, we won't, ar we won't argue the politics of that. Yeah. Um, but I've been really grateful to sci-fi for that be because of the roles that I've gotten to play. You know, I don't I don't have to be a minor character. I don't have to die in the first hour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can actually have some life and do some interesting things. So I guess it's... It, I've always just walked through the doors that presented themselves to me. Okay. And, and sci-fi and genre television has, has been where it's at. Excellent. So uh, you're, you're a fan of Star Trek. Are you a fan of any other sci-fi... Um, yes, yeah. Oh, gosh. You know, I watch so many things, so it's hard to keep track. Uh, I haven't watched Stargate. I should have watched Stargate, <laughs> but I didn't. I know. it's And I haven't watched Doctor Who. Please forgive me. Oh, no. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no. I, I ha there's a list, okay? There's a waiting list, all right? It's just, it's, it's, it's lower on, down on the list. It's That's all just on what's Netflix. Happening. And we love Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm watching Helix. At the moment, uh, Ron's new show. Uh, love to see Luciana Caro on there. Uh, I love her. And, of course, Game of Thrones. Obviously, Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I watched so many things. Oh, I just finished Sherlock. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, nice. With Benedict Cumberbatch. And, and what's his name? Who plays Watson? Oh, I'm, so, I'm the oh worst. I love him. He was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh -huh. I knew so it right awesome. before you said it. And he was in The Hobbit. Uh, what, uh, Trevor, no. Nah. no. Anyway. This is where Johnny normally gets out his phone and looks stuff up. Yep. Google it. <laughs> IMDb. <laughs> Martin Freeman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, VIP Thank you in the front row. VIP in the audience. <laughs> he, he was in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yeah, he Wasn't yes, that him? Yes, he was the main yeah. guy like, with the, the, the main guy. Before then. I, I, I knew I'd recognize him, but I couldn't quite place where I'd seen him in. <laughs> right? He's exceptional as well as yes, Watson. That's a hard character to play, this, the support to someone so distinct uh, as Sherlock. Uh, yes, loved Sherlock Holmes. Um, what else did I watch recently? I, you know, I, I, just, I just like charge through hours and hours of 
series television because that's how you do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. What you're you watch every single season of Battlestar Galactica in a week. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't go to work and your lights get cut well, off and <laughs> or you <laughs> or you watch it during work. Hey, I had some down data entry time, all right? Hey, it's better than Facebook. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that's sort of what's been Oh, I've been watching Boss with Kelsey Grammer. Okay. Um, of course, you know, House of Cards and Orange is the New Black and Hemlock Grove and got to support the network. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Was it different working for Netflix as a, as a network? Did that, was there a different feel there? Um, you know, they're young in terms of being a network. Uh, so they're a lot more libertine. Okay. Um, which, which is great in a lot of ways. It's not, uh, it's not those sort of corporate politicking aspect of it that's sometimes present on, on big network shows. Uh, they were very, uh, there was a very close proximity between us and, and the executives as okay. well. They were always sort of around. And I mean, they're, they're a young, renegade group of guys. Right on. They, they really were just like, hey, I want to do this. Let's do it. Like, they've, they've got more money than they know what to do with. So <laughs> they really don't care. <laughs> like, uh, which is awesome for us because we, you know, you can swear and yeah. Run around and say inappropriate things. And Absolutely. It was, it was all kind of cool, and they would hang out with us on, on the downtime and right on. all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. So definitely a different feel, and, and just because just that's what they do, right? I mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ron and David Icke and, and uh, Bradley and David, you know, all the writers, Mark Verheiden. I worked with Mark Verheiden as well on Hemlock Grove, so it was great to see him again. He was one of the lead writers on BSG. Um, they were around, you know. Yeah. Ron would sit on set with us. Yeah. Uh, but Ron has a great deal of gravitas, as they call it. He's he's a very serious, scarily intelligent man. He's very nice. <laughs> but I would all I was always kind of intimidated to talk to him because I was like, blah, 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 I don't know what to say, <laughs> you know. Um, but he was always available, you know, to. But you would ask him something seemingly innocuous, yeah. like, why isn't she showing up at the courthouse? Or, what does this button do? <laughs> um, or, what's, what is this radar of? You know, yeah. <laughs> what, what is this of? What am I looking at on the screen? And he would have a very detailed, extremely lengthy response oh, wow. to all those questions. So, like, you better come with something good. <laughs> but the rest of the time, he was just kind of there. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So he helped build the story in your guys' heads. Just oh, absolutely. The imagery and everything. Yeah, absolutely. It's the world. You know, he builds worlds. If you look at any of his shows, there's no, there's no detail left undiscovered. It is they are the worlds of Ron Moore. Right on. So you mentioned earlier that you have something coming out the, towards the end of the year, uh, this year, right? Yeah, I think we're going, uh, the release date is potentially September, I want to say. Um, it's a movie. You're going to see me on the big screen. All right. I'm, I'm excited and slightly terrified. I mean, I have a little head, so it'll be good to see it really <laughs> big. But then, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> right on. I might have to sort of watch the whole thing through my eyes. Um, it's called Care for What You Wish For. It's kind of a sexy thriller. Okay. Um, I can't say too much about my character. Um, she's kind of quiet and behind the scenes. Okay. Um, but who do we have? Uh, Isabel Lucas uh, from The Immortals. She's so gorgeous. She's got such an ethereal quality. Sometimes I would hug her and I, I, I would feel like my hand would... Yeah. Like my hand would almost pass through her. Yeah. Like, she's very fey. <laughs> right on. Um, uh, Paul Sorvino. Uh, I mean, crazy to be, to be working with Paul Sorvino. That's, you know, that's Al Pacino and Robert De Niro kind of yeah. generation yeah, absolutely. caliber of, of actor. So it was, I learned a lot from him. Dermot Mulroney. Um, and the wild card of the bunch... Besides me, uh, was Nick Jonas of the Jonas Brothers. Wow. Um, Very interesting. Yeah. Right on. I hadn't listened to any of his music before <laughs> I met him, 
which was slightly awkward in the that, beginning. That would be like the gentleman <laughs> to your right not having seen Battlestar Galactica or Hemlock Grove. I, I haven't seen either. You're forgiven. Movie. It's okay. I will watch them. So. Oh. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff just reminded me of something awesome. Um, wait, I'll finish this thought first. Um, Nick Jonas was amazing. He, you know, he, he has so much uh, breadth of experience in the music world, but he's, it seems like he really wants to get into acting. Yeah. And to watch him on set, uh, he was incredibly humble and open to learning well, from everyone around him. And that's the best kind. I mean, if... It, it, you know, yeah. a lot of musicians turn actor, but yeah. you need somebody like that who's willing to learn from people around them. That, that's, that's good to hear. He, he's really a very well-raised, level-headed young man. Right on. It was a real pl- pleasure to work with him. Um, I, I'm going to ask a favor of you guys. I'm going to talk about something slightly political. Okay. Uh, and later on, I'm going to ask this of the audience. Uh, at my panel tomorrow, if anybody's going to show up, um, my mother's a teacher. My mother's been an educator for 30, how old am I? 35 years. <laughs> and um, she's on strike at the moment. They're on strike. They're, they're fighting for extra funding for special needs kids in the classroom. And uh, my mother's incredibly passionate about teaching teenagers. She believes in um, teaching emotional intelligence, collaboration, group work, um, Preparing them for the real world. Absolutely. Um, and not just the corporate world. Uh, because you don't go to school for content. You can get content anywhere. That's yeah. what the internet is for. Uh, you, you go to school to learn how to be with people. <laughs> really, at the end of the day. Uh, she involves a lot of technology uh, in her classroom and, uh, and a lot of open communication. She's incredibly honest um, with her kids. My mother is eccentric, <laughs> to say the least. But she is a brilliant educator and she feels very passionate about what she's doing you can find her blog at teachingteens.org okay or teachteens.org uh she does a lecture called teaching teens in the age of google which is uh uh, she's very passionate about but she asked a favor of me okay um if i could give a shout out to the teachers in bc uh on the picket lines and uh, do what I, see what I can do in support of them. So at the panel tomorrow, I'm going to ask everybody to yell out w- for me. Um, I support public education, so say we all. <laughs> so say we all. Um, and if anybody wants to come up and hold up a sign and take a picture, of, take a picture with me, and uh, I'm going to send those out into the, the Twitterverse and get them on my mom's blog and just get some, raise some awareness for public education out there because education is a right. Not a privilege. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, I mean, guys. I wish we could actually <laughs> sit here and discuss this because I, I saw some posts on Facebook and I've like, been wanting to discuss this with people because I totally believe in like, you know, being able to, to – sorry. I totally believe in like all the content that, like you were saying, we get in school, you know, you can get anywhere else, but – socially and emotionally preparing our children to interact with people in the real world yep. is so much more important than, you know, all of that. So Exactly. And then, you know, when, when you then also come up against uh, other issues, uh, kids with special needs, with learning challenges, uh, with social challenges, with, with other things going on, um, physical as well. And, you know, the teachers need to be equipped to do that. They're willing to do it. They put in a lot of hard work. Uh, they take a lot of their own extra time. Um, and it's only right that they should have support in that because, it, you know, whether you have a special need or not, um, your teacher should be there for you. The education should be available to you. You, you still have a right to learn and to thrive in ever, whatever it is that you want to do. Absolutely. Well, thank you. When is your um, panel tomorrow? My panel is at 1 o'clock. Please come hang out with me. It's very lonely, and I have to tell bad jokes <laughs> if I'm all by myself. Can you tell bad jokes if we show up? Can you tell bad jokes if we show up? Oh, I will totally tell bad jokes. I mean, they're really bad, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn you. <laughs> So, oh no, because it would take too long. And I, since I only have three of them, I gotta like save them for the panel tomorrow. Hello. <laughs> well, we can give you a, we can give you a couple of really bad jokes. Good. Yeah. Do it. So, pirate walks into a bar. He has a steering wheel coming out of his pants. The bartender says, "Hey, you have a steering steering wheel coming out of your pants." 
The pirate says, Arr, it's driving me nuts. Wow. I, told, I said bad, right? I told really you bad. it was bad. That I love that. That makes me so joke. happy. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be up here right now. Whatever, I'm you not. love me for it. <laughs> so, uh, other than tomorrow at the panel, where else can we see you? You're going to be hitting any other uh, conventions? Oh, um, I think this is my last scheduled one for the year. I've, I've done a couple already this year. I was in WonderCon in Anaheim. I went to Lake Charles, Louisiana. Um, I think I have one potentially coming up in London. For if anybody's in Europe, drop by. We have you listeners know. worldwide. <laughs> Swing by, come and see me. Um, I'm, I'm going to be doing a bulk of tra- a bit of traveling okay. uh, coming up. Yeah, my travel schedule is pretty epic. I don't actually get to spend a lot of time in my house. And, but instead, you get the Caribbean. I, that's a but good I trade. get the Caribbean. Well, my house is in the Caribbean. Oh, so. oh well, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Okay, I have, I have one last question. Um, we're going to talk about the kitchen now. Yes, yes, my you favorite love spending topic. time in the kitchen. Woo-hoo. What is um, a couple of your favorite dishes to create? My favorite dishes to create. Well, that's a hard question because it's all about what's in the fridge. Um, like I recently went home and we had a bunch of stuff stuck in storage. You know that we left there since the last time we were in the house, which is a few months ago. Um, we kept it all in the fridge and in dry storage and we challenged ourselves to only go to the market one time in a month and to make create meals every day with what's in the pantry um and that that it's like it's my own personal version of chopped right on yeah (laughs) (laughs) so i don't know what did i make the i made um i made agadashi tofu with shiitake and wood ear mushroom ragu and all that came out of the pantry it was delicious if I do it, say so myself. It sounds delicious. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Shirley's getting... <laughs> yeah. And we didn't have any milk, so I made milk and a soft cheese out of macadamia nuts and walnuts. Oh, wow. And then I made... Um, the great thing about living in the Caribbean is you can go outside and get stuff to eat. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we picked a bunch of oranges and mangoes. Um, and rosemary from the land, and I made a kind of a marmalade, a rosemary, orange, and lemon marmalade, and I put it over top of the nut cheese, and I made some crackers in my dehydrator, and I am giving away way too much about the things that I do in my spare time. It's slightly embarrassing. You're absolutely right. (laughs) So I came home from work uh, a while ago, and I was having a bad day, and I said, Shirley, I want food. And she said, well, what do we have? And I said, you figure it out, but I want blueberries. We had frozen blueberries. (laughs) She made this chicken blueberry compote that was delicious. Turned the chicken blue. Sounds amazing. It was was amazing. It was fantastic. With some rice, it was awesome. I'm just one of those people that, just like you, I look in the kitchen, look in the fridge, and I'm like, throw this, 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 this together, and it creates this amazing thing. And I don't have a green thumb, but I have, uh, I guess, a cooking thumb yeah. <laughs> or something. So. Well, and we always keep a garden. Wherever I am, I try and plant a garden, even if it's just a couple of containers in a window. Um, I mean, I have to get people to look after my garden when I leave. <laughs> 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 but that's not such a bad thing. Here, feed yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's always fun to go outside and see what's growing and, and pull it out and, or pick it and... It, it teaches me a lot of patience as well um, when things aren't available. Like, there are no avocados. It's not avocado season. You can't buy an avocado. That's it. <laughs> right on. You can't just go to a different store. There just aren't any avocados. Um, and, you know, when they come back in season, which they will in a couple months, then I eat avocados with every meal. Avocado fries are my next challenge. Really? Because I tried them with, with tapioca flour, and it didn't work. So i got to try that again. Right on. That Deep sounds... fried avocado sticks. Yeah. Sounds not so fun, but I'm still going to do it. I think it sounds amazing. <laughs> so welcome to the Nerds Domain Cooking Show. Today yeah. we have Candace McClure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that for next year. When you're here next year, yeah. we'll, we'll definitely do that. And then the next thing I'm trying to find as an ingredient are bugs. But you can't buy bugs. Like, you have to, you have to like, harvest them yourself or something. I haven't figured that one out yet. Uh, have you checked Amazon? Because everything is on Amazon. That's they, true, too. They sell Doritos on Amazon. What? Yeah, but, Absolutely. yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can get, yeah, a bag of ants. Great, great A bugs Or larva. Uh, in D.C., they have a couple of really good um, bug like restaurants. restaurants. I'm not joking. No, no, no. I there's know. tons of bug restaurants, but they're all like gastronomique. You know, they're all yeah. fancy yeah. and there's coolie and I don't know. So, so before you start eating the bugs, do you have to do a lot of research on which ones are actually edible or? Yeah, well, there, there are certain class, class of bugs that are, that are more edible than others. I mean, a lot of it is common sense. Take the stinger off the scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> Take the head off the larva. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been like that since I was a kid, though. I've, I used to eat ants. Don't tell that to people. I guess I told that to everyone. Um, there's, like, this fat worm that lives in trees in Africa. You can find them. I think you find them in Australia, too. But they're, like, they're basically just, like, sacks of fat. And you roast them, and they're delicious. But, like, you eat marrow bones. Those are bones filled with... Yeah, Those absolutely. are delicious. Marbled steak, yeah. fatty worms. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have uh, a photo op at 3 o'clock today, right? Uh, That's what Jeff says. Jeff knows. Je- yeah. Jeff knows everything. Yes. Photo op at 3. I'll be signing until 6. Yep. Uh, tomorrow I've got a panel at 1. Um, and photo ops at 345. This is very handy, this little thing that they yeah, gave Yeah, I me. really like our badges. I'm, I'm really impressed with the badges with the, uh, the map on the back. I don't know if you saw she these. The yeah, we got a map. Yeah. Oh, is, see, I need that. Well, no, that's okay. I'll just get lost, and then I'll buy stuff. Well, that's, what Jeff, that's what Jeff is for, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I think um, I might get him lost, too. <laughs> so your, your photo ops are $25, right? Uh, that's what Jeff says. Yes. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's got this Whatever handle. Whatever Jeff says. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thir- oh, photos are thirty. Yeah, 20 at my table, and then okay. yeah. Um, so we can find you on Facebook at Candice McClure. Candice McClure on Facebook. Um, I have two pages, Candice with different spellings, because that's my Candice with the K is my alter ego. <laughs> She's my television personality. I tried to change it, but my business manager wouldn't let me. Um, <laughs> So I have two, I have two Facebook pages, okay. a personal page and a fan page. And yes, CandiceMcClure.com will be up and running at some point. And your Twitter? Uh, uh, my Twitter is ca- at CandiceMcClure as well. Um, I'm, I'm a big Instagrammer if you really want to find me. Absolutely. Instagram is the jam because uh, it's less words. And, and is what it was the same thing, <laughs> Candice? Uh, no. Insta- I hide on Instagram, oh, you hide but on people Instagram. have found me, well, well, which, which sh- is fine. I, lo- I love it. You should definitely give it to us, even if it's after the show. No, Instagram is real, real Candy Mac. That's Re- me. Real uh, Candy real Mac. Real K A N D Y M A C. Real Candy Mac. Right on. I just apologize because I will post pictures of food. Oh no! So we're there. Make oh. And we're of my feet. These are two things that I put on Instagram. Feet. So. That's, well, yeah, you had me on that's food. That's what that is. <laughs> I, I try not to put them next to each other. I, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Opposite. All right. Well, I, sorry. No, the no. audience is looking at me quizzically about my feet, so I'll explain. Uh, that's it. I made that bread. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I make coffee. You know the poo coffee? The coffee that the mongooses eat and then they poo it out? I went to Bali and I got the coffee. And I made it with coconut milk and was delicious. That's what's in that cup. Because I didn't have any milk. But I'm I had I think coconuts. you need to open a restaurant, too. <laughs> I don't think anything that a mongoose poops out is delicious. It is, actually. Because it's, it's, it's slightly less tanniny than regular coffee. Anyway, listen. I went to Bali. I got the coffee. <laughs> um, I've been taking pictures of my feet since I was 18. Whenever I travel somewhere or on different sets or places that I go. And I take pictures of my feet and other people's feet. And I've got sort of a journey of where I've been, of me kind of walking. That's, kind of, that's actually kind of awesome. And uh, the plan is um, I do some work. Well, I'm a sponsor for uh, Plan Canada and for um, Save the Children. And they have an initiative uh, called Because I'm a Girl. 
and uh, walk in her shoes. Okay. And these are predominantly centered around women, women's needs. Because the statistics are that if you change the circumstances of a woman in the community, she changes the circumstances of everyone around her. So it's a great multiplying effect. Uh, And these initiatives are mainly geared towards education of young girls and entrepreneur initiatives. Uh, But they have a campaign called Walk in Her Shoes where, you know, women have to walk a long way to get stuff. Really basic stuff. Water, firewood, things like that. Uh, So I'm I'm working on an idea of putting together a, a book of my feet and maybe some other famous people's feet. Right on. Um, and then maybe some normal, regular women who actually have to do the walking. Okay. Um, that sounds awesome. And, and put it all together and maybe we'll sell some stuff and then make some money to, to give to such women. <laughs> so they maybe won't have to walk so far. Excellent. Um, yeah. So that, that's what the feet is. It's not just, I don't have a <laughs> fetish site. <laughs> Although maybe that's, no, hold on, wait. <laughs> That may be to some. <laughs> well, thanks for letting me talk about all kinds of weird things. No, that's, this is what we, this is what I try and do is get people on and then embarrass themselves. That, I don't oh, have well, to do it for easy. you. That, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that all day. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and wrap us up. But um, as always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdsdomain. Oh, well, okay, yes, I, I know where we're at on Facebook. I do. I um, you can find us over at booth 840 and 842 right over there in, in aisle 800. Um, you can find us on Twitter at face or no, not at Facebook. That's See, not us. Told you. This is why you <laughs> at Nerds Domain. You can find our website at nerdsdom.com. And um, I think that's it. T-shirts on Slash Loot. Oh, T-shirts on Slash Loot. And click our link on our website and buy stuff on Amazon. Doesn't cost you a thing less, but a little bit comes back to us. <laughs> and, Candice, thank you again. You've been a wonderful, wonderful guest. So It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. So thank you very much. And thanks to all of you who came out to sit. <laughs> and we Thanks. will talk to you guys real soon. This has been a production of the Omega Nerds Network, the network where it's on.